Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Today we're spotlighting the largest youth development program in Vermont. It is the UVM Extension 4-H program, which involves more than 7,000 young people all over the state. This first week in October is National 4-H Week. It's an opportunity to learn about 4-H in your local community and showcase the hands-on learning experiences available to youth. Sarah Kleinman is the State Director of 4-H Farm Worker and Family Education Programs. She joins us this afternoon via Zoom. Sarah, thanks so much for being with us and happy 4-H Week. Thank you. It's exciting to be here and great to uh, launch our new program here. Yeah. So let's start by reflecting, you know, just a little bit on the past year or more. Everyone in the 4-H program from educators and volunteers to the kids themselves, of course, have made adjustments and changes because of the pandemic. What did Vermont 4-H do and, and how has it worked? Oh, gosh. Well, um, for the past year and a half, like everybody else, uh, we went virtual, um, at least in the beginning. Uh, it took us a little bit to get our, our footing, um, but we really, you know, pivot was was the word of last year. I think uh, we did just that. We turned all of our programming um, into virtual opportunities, uh, and so um, my staff teamed and they worked together to learn uh, new technology and ensure that we could offer all sorts of programmings from our clubs and encouraging our volunteers to bring their clubs together using Teams or Zoom or really any platform that they could, uh, as well as provide all sorts of short-term special interest after-school programs um, and, and do what we needed to do. And then as things got a little bit safer, uh, especially this past summer, we were able to reopen a bit. Um, clubs were allowed to meet and first in small groups and then outdoors only. Um, and then we got to this summer where we were really able to re-engage and have our clubs, um, you know, operate with some semblance of normalcy. So it was great. It's been, it's been a ride and we're ready to pivot in any direction um, at any point. So what did you learn from that, those pivots uh, that you can or will apply to 4-H moving forward? That's a really good question and one that my team is still working on. Um, we definitely had a lot of success with the virtual programs. It broke down county lines, it broke down state lines, even national lines. We have people from different countries and different states joining my colleagues in other states. Um, we, we were able to collaborate. So there was, there was a ton of collaboration going on and that was really important um, and, and something that will definitely continue forward. Um, we were also able to operate some of our large events, things that typically support the club program like state day and even some of our livestock contests into a virtual space. Um, you know, I, th I think there's some growing pains, but oftentimes there's transportation problems. And so being able to offer things in this type of a manner uh, were helpful in that sense. Great. And, you know, another issue, equity and inclusion have been brought to the forefront by the pandemic and other events and issues nationwide. How is Vermont 4-H stepping up to meet these areas? So, right. So virtual, um, in a way, allows, as I mentioned, transportation is an issue in mm -hmm. some respects. And so it allowed us to meet, reach more youth who had that sort of a barrier in place. But not everybody has, we know, has broadband. Not everybody has Chromebooks and, and technology mm -hmm. tools. So um, it's not a, a, a fail safe. We were able to, in some areas, create take home kits. Some of our programming worked closely with schools to create either family engagement or youth engagement activities with hard goods. And then they were delivered on school buses or as kids went to school, um, maybe once or twice a week, they were able to pick up those packages. Uh, and so we, we had that down in Rutland County. There was a huge effort to um, do this out of the box initiative where boxes were sent home um, periodically and even dropped off at sites where there may have been um, folks uh, who are housing insecure um, where, where they were living to make sure that the youth had opportunities. So, and then in our virtual programs, we really emphasize belonging. Belonging is a huge component, making sure that people have safe interactions with adults and with each mm -hmm. other. Um, just because we're in a virtual space, we really emphasize those elements of our programming. 
Great, so a lot more accessible now. And what kind of programming content does 4-H now offer? Well, um, I mean, we're still doing a lot of what we're doing. So agriculture, of course, um, is very important to us. Uh, but agriculture in the sense of science, so um, science or STEM, STEAM, there's all different acronyms, that has been core to our programming and it continues to be so. We have a new initiative actually in collaboration with the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences here at UVM. We're building out robotics initiatives. We have new STEM ambassadors that are undergraduate college students uh, that will be delivering programming, hopefully out in the state. We have a multi-state grant with uh, Maine and New Hampshire that's also looking at agri-STEM skills. But we're also delving a bit more into healthy living education, which also has been a core component of our work, but we've been a little bit lighter. And now we're looking to build up social emotional skills, um, uh, and and really just help youth, um, you know, get past uh, some of the challenges of the pandemic by making sure they have healthy outlets and learn how to navigate healthy behaviors. Wonderful. And it was just a couple of weeks ago, Across the Fence found 4-Hers getting hands-on experiences with animals and in the business world, all at the Tunbridge Fair. If it's late summer in Orange County, it's time for the Tunbridge World's Fair. Being here means a lot. The fairgrounds were closed last year due to the pandemic. It was only the third time that's happened in the fair's 150-year history. Chandler Cook is here to show his cow, Odessa. He's glad to be back where he and Odessa belong. It means a lot to me. I was looking forward to it for 2020, but when COVID hit, I was really disappointed. And during COVID, I was gotten so bored because we were stuck in home. I was like, Mom, can, we, can you please bring me to the barn? I want to go back. When you found out you were coming to the 2021 Tunbridge Fair, you must have felt great. I got really excited because I got to show one of the cows I've been working on for all summer. Austin Washburn brought Lexi to show at the Tunbridge Fair. His shirt says it all when it comes to the bond he shares with his cow. The friendlier they are, the more they want to snuggle with you when you're trying to walk them, so it makes it kind of hard. You don't want too snuggly of a cow, I guess. You do, you just got to train them when they're on this not to be too snuggly. This is a huge deal for a lot of people. This is the culmination of their summer. Molly McFawn is the 4-H educator for Orange and Washington counties. Being back at the fair amongst kids and cows provides her and these 4-Hers with a needed sense of normalcy. It's Tunbridge Fair and this is what it is. It's maybe a little bit smaller this year, but I think it's great for this year, the turnout that we do have. It's really wonderful to be able to see everyone that's here. But it is, it's Tunbridge Fair. It's the same atmosphere. It's the same joy that I see with everyone here showing and talking to the public. They're all very friendly. <laughs> Maeve Leslie Gowalt likes talking with the public almost as much as she likes winning ribbons. She and her cow, Champagne, took home the prize for junior champion in confirmation in the women's division. Think of confirmation as a beauty contest for cows. I love being here. I love getting to see the people, working in my cows, showing my cows, you know, just getting to educate the public. And we work on this all year. The whole year we're walking our cows, preparing them, getting ready them, getting them ready for the fair and everything. And I don't know, I just think it's a great experience. We go to a few fairs and shows every year and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and the cows enjoy it too. When 4-Hers aren't in the ring or the barn, the place to be is the 4-H ice cream booth. The ice cream scoop is the biggest fundraiser for the Orange County 4-H Foundation. The kids do all the work. We're working on life skills like changing money and doing things like that. We're also working on how you would work at a restaurant. You know, we're working in scooping ice cream, make sure everybody's tidy, make sure they're doing what they need to be doing. When she's not taking orders, scooping ice cream, or making change, Elizabeth Waterman answers questions from customers about all things 4-H. Sometimes people will ask a very common question like, what is 4-H? What do you, what do, you do? Um, which is a hard question to answer because it's, it's a big question. What do you tell them? Uh, it's a big program for youth under the age of 18. You can do a lot of different things. You pick something or more than one thing and you get to do that and learn and new skills and um, opportunities like working in an ice cream booth that you may not do otherwise. Showing, scooping, and sharing. It's how 4-H stands out at the World's Fair. In Tunbridge, I'm Keith Silva, 
with Across the Fence. That 4-H ice cream booth turned a profit of about $2,000. The money will be used by the Orange County 4-H Foundation for scholarships and to assist 4-Hers to go to national events. And if you're just joining us, we're highlighting the state 4-H program with 4-H director Sarah Kleinman. And Sarah, you were there at the Tunbridge uh, Fair with some 4-Hers. I was. Well, I went down to help scoop ice cream. Um, <laughs> it was a great experience, and I was very impressed uh, with the young people that were in the booth um, interacting with the public and making change and really just learning business skills and supporting their program. Great. And in the video, we met Molly McFawn. Uh, she is one of several 4-H County educators around the state, and their role is very important. Uh, incredibly important. They're really the face of 4-H um, to the, the local connection in, in our counties and in our communities. Um, and they've just been amazing over the past two years. I, I can't say enough about how uh, incredible that uh, this team has just embraced the unknown. They were able to push through technology challenges and programming challenges and, and frustrations and discomfort mm -hmm. and you know, challenges of perhaps in, in their personal worlds. Um, flexible, adaptable, uh, and they just really rose to the occasion. It's so been great to my team. Right. And another big and incredibly important part of 4-H are the volunteers. And what are some examples of what volunteers do? Sure. Volunteers uh, work right alongside the youth. Uh, really, the 4-H program um, does not exist without our volunteers. They help to facilitate most of our programming. Uh, and so we need volunteers right now, especially to step up and lead many of our 4-H clubs. It has gotten harder uh, to sustain the 4-H club model because it is an ongoing activity that lasts a long time. And of course, as parents join, because their kids are part of the program, when the youth graduate uh, and move on, oftentimes the parents do as well. So we are really looking for adults who are willing to um, give some time and support 4-H activities right now. And even if it's not a club model, we they can deliver a short-term six-hour program that might be spread out over six different days uh, or just get involved in different ways. Great. So, 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 Sarah, quickly, how can people get more information about 4-H, and including volunteer opportunities? They can call our offices. So reach out to your 4-H office or call our state office, our number right on the screen, or you can find us online on our website as well. Okay, Sarah, thank you so much for shepherding our 4-H program. Uh, we'll see you next time. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.